Would you kindly? A powerful phrase. A familiar phrase. Sit, would you kindly? Stand, would you kindly? Beat Bioshock with just the pistol, would you kindly? That's right, chuck all that other crap out the porthole. We're beating Bioshock with just the pistol. Simple rules for this challenge. I can only use the pistol to inflict damage. Plasmids are allowed within reason, and the only reason I say that is because you need to use some of them to progress through the game. But I also utilized Winter Blast, not as a weapon, but as a tool, specifically to freeze turrets and machines when I wanted to hack them. Aside from that, plasmids were not used unless they were absolutely necessary. I also made it my goal to deal with all of the little sisters in the game, which meant that I had to kill plenty of big daddies. That's it, but before we get into the meat of the video, I would like to thank my patrons Riley Anderson, Dr. Maritimus, and Anonymous. And a huge thank you to my pal Insane Frame for getting me back into the challenge groove, and for keeping me company throughout the playthrough. Go check his channel out, there's a link in the description. And while I've got you here, subscribe to my channel too if you find yourself enjoying the video. It helps me out greatly. Now, the game is set to survivor difficulty, which might have been a bad move, but oh well. Ready? Let's go. Eh, <laughs> plane crash go brr. I make my way to the bathysphere, and even after all the times I've played this game, it is still an absolute treat to see Rapture. By the way, if you think the game looks a little gritty, it's because I'm playing the original version, and not the remaster. Once I'm actually inside Rapture, Atlas helps me get by a splicer, and then I have to use the wrench. Yeah, I know it's not the pistol, but there is no other way to get past this part, or any other parts until we actually get the pistol, which thankfully is very soon. I beat the tar out of a splicer and get access to Electrobolt, our first plasmid. Don't worry, I won't be using it unless it's required, like right here to open the door. I have to wallop a few more splicers with the wrench, and then I take the elevator up, while Atlas begs me to help save his family. Not much of a choice there, though. We can finally get the pistol here, and the run can begin for real. I didn't have to wait long to test it out either. As you can see, headshots are super effective, and we're going to have to try and get as many of them as we can, so we can conserve our ammo for the many big daddies I would have to fight. Speaking of which, we meet our first big daddy here, and I do declare that he is indeed the largest of papas. I kill a few more splicers, and Andrew Ryan eventually gets wind that I'm here, and sends some of his goons after me. Thankfully, in the first part of the game, all of the splicers die in one headshot, so it wasn't difficult at all. Ryan then traps me and sends more splicers to kill me, but Atlas opens the door to the medical pavilion, and I break for it. The medical pavilion introduces us to a whole lot of new stuff, like hacking. After playing this game as many times as I have, you get pretty good at it. I also get to use the first Circus of Values machine to buy some ammo. These are the lifeline of this run. Pistol ammo eventually becomes damn near impossible to find late game, unless you're buying it from the vending machines. This area is as easy as walking for a few seconds and entering the door to Neptune's bounty. Just kidding, of course. I have to do a whole hell of a lot more work than that. Splicers start pouring in from everywhere when I try to enter, and I am informed by Atlas that I would need Dr. Steinman's card to enter. I could just run straight to Steinman, but not really. The game is still being a tutorial, and I need to pick up a few new plasmids to actually get to him. I was okay with this, as I would need all the extra cash and ammo I could get, so exploring seemed like a good idea. Turrets and cameras are also new enemies to deal with here, and since I didn't want to use Electrobolt, I would have to destroy the turrets since you can't hack them unless they are froze or stunned, and I would have to approach the cameras very carefully to avoid detection to hack them. Any splicers I face are still relatively easy for now, and I make my way to the Incinerate Plasmid. I technically didn't need to use Incinerate here, but I just couldn't help myself. It is very much implied that you do need to use it here, so I didn't feel bad. Now the only time I'll use it is when a door needs to be thawed open. With Incinerate in our hands, that unlocked a whole slew of new areas for us to explore, which led to things like auto-hack tools, safes, and gene tonics. Most of the tonics I would end up using throughout the game increase my defense and help with my hacking, and making more ammo at the U-Invent machine eventually. Getting into Dandy Dental was our next goal, as I needed the Telekinesis Plasma to progress to Steinman. Plenty of splicers to deal with, but like I said, none of them are too difficult just yet. With telekinesis on our hand, we would be able to grab the nitro splicer's grenade out of the air and chuck it at the debris blocking our path. Steinman decides to hack a few turrets and security bots, but they were no match for the pistol. We arrive at Steinman, and this is our first boss fight. I use the term loosely because Bioshock doesn't really differentiate these fights from normal ones. They're usually just an amped up normal splicer. He's definitely harder than anyone else we've fought so far, and I actually ran out of normal ammo while he had about half of his health left. 
I had one anti-personnel round on me, and that killed him immediately. Wish I had more of those so I would still have normal ammo, but you know how it goes. With Steinman dead, we could go to Neptune's bounty, but not before meeting Tannenbaum. We get to decide the fate of our first little sister, and since I really don't need Adam, I opted to save them, if only for the chance at some ammo when Tannenbaum rewards us many times in the future. Of course, that was the only freebie the game gives us, and if I want any more, I would have to actually fight a big daddy. Oh boy. First, I made sure to visit the Gatherer's Garden and buy armored gel for extra protection. Then I trudged out to find the big daddy. I had a few armor piercing rounds on me from exploring, but not nearly enough for this fight. I did make sure to buy as much extra ammo as I could, but it was only about half of what I could carry because I ran out of money. This fight did not go well. One hit from the papa and I already needed to use a medkit. The armor piercing ammo got him down to around half of his health, and the rest of my ammo did pretty much jack squat. I needed more ammo to finish the fight. Time to run around and find any extra ammo or money I accidentally left behind. I found just enough for one more cylinder of ammo and figured I would try again. Talk about just enough. I ended the fight with one armor piercing round remaining, and I was pretty happy, but also pretty sad, as I now had the equivalent of no ammo, but the big daddy was dead and our time in the medical pavilion was over. Neptune's bounty is one of those levels that I like, but also dread. It definitely lasts a lot longer than I would like it to, and it's made even worse here. I'm pretty much immediately faced with a big daddy, and I know better than to actually fight him yet. You see, at the end of this level, we get to activate our first power to the people machine, and I can use that to increase our pistol's damage, so I have to skirt by all three of the big daddies and little sisters in the level until then. Thankfully, they are neutral until you attack them. The gatherer's garden machine is nice to see right off the bat, since I have the atom to buy the health upgrade. I do a little more exploring and killing before heading to see old Peachy Wilkins. He won't let me through to the next area until I photograph some spider splicers for him. I get attacked by one here, and you're not able to win this fight, but it does drain me of much needed ammo and health. The camera is just a short jaunt away from us, past many more splicers and even a big daddy that I sidestepped for now. Once I have my hands on the camera, the game gives us a spider splicer to photograph immediately, and I will say now, I use the camera a lot in this playthrough. It doesn't do damage, and it makes my life a little easier, so I allowed it for the run. Taking research photographs of different splicers would allow us to do more damage and unlock some new gene tonics, which are super helpful. Like Scrounger, which is my absolute favorite in the game. Don't like the loot you got dropped from an enemy? Just re-roll it and hope the next batch is better. We can do the same thing with turrets and cameras for extra damage and tonics as well. I'll say it now so I don't have to talk about it too much later. I ended up fully researching every splicer, machine, and big daddy type I could, including little sisters. With the camera in hand, I had to take a few more pictures of spider splicers for Peach Wilkins, and even had to fight a few of them too. These guys were a lot harder than normal splicers since they moved pretty erratically, but a few well-placed headshots and they were down. Back to Peach Wilkins, and I saw a message I had never seen before. The game definitely didn't want you avoiding all the big daddies in this level, and I thought that was pretty funny. Peach will let us through with the photos we took, but I needed to place my weapons in the pneumo tube so he would let me in. This was not good at all. I no longer had a gun and knew that I had to fight Peach to continue on. This was when I realized something quite important. The only reason I wasn't electrobolting machinery is because I thought it did slight damage to them. It turns out that it doesn't. Now I had no qualms about zapping the nearby turrets to help me out in this fight. I also hacked the camera so it would periodically send out robots too. Not really the bravest way to handle the fight, but I didn't have to use my wrench or damaging plasmids for it either. With Peach dead, I could collect my weapons and finally activate the power to the people machine. I now did some extra damage, and it was time to collect some Atom. I made sure to photograph both the big daddy and the little sister first, then it was time to see what this new pistol could do. I collected quite a bit of armor-piercing ammo up to this point once again, but that was still not enough. Even with an upgraded weapon, I was still struggling to have enough ammo to fight these guys. This was a problem. I once again had to scrounge around for some ammo or money, and was able to get enough rounds to hopefully finish one off. Just like the last time, I had pretty much just enough for it, and saved another little sister. I get quite a bit of cash from each big daddy I kill, so I can buy more ammo for the next. I made sure to pick up Winter Blast before the next big daddy fight, and some armor piercing rounds too. I had to utilize a few turrets for the next fight, and still ended up with almost no ammo. Who could have realized that the pistol was not the most effective weapon at killing armored walking tanks? 
The last Big Daddy in the level was much the same, but this time I had to let the turret do a lot of the work for me. Thankfully, it was the explodey kind of turret, so it wasn't that bad. Time to go and save Atlas's family, and this level is short and sweet. No Big Daddies, no hard fight, just a few splicers and a light. Andrew Ryan explodes the bathysphere holding Atlas's family, and now I'm the one who has to go kill Ryan. Makes sense to me, I suppose. Time for my favorite level in the game, Arcadia. I love this level, it's got wonderful aesthetics, and a fun new enemy for us to face in the Houdini Splicer. They teleport around and are all in all a fairly easy enemy. Just watch where they teleport, and boom, headshot. The real goal of Arcadia is to open up the locked door for us to get to Fort Frolic, but we can't do that right off the bat, and I knew that already. So I made sure to loot around and get some ammo, money, and research for tonics and extra damage before Ryan decides to shut off the air to Arcadia by killing the trees. Not a very nice guy. To continue on, I would have to collect a rose specimen for Dr. Langford, the head doctor of the area, and I stopped at the last important power to the people machine along the way. Now we had a massive magazine size of 24 rounds instead of 6. Sadly, that is all we can upgrade for the pistol. This is as good as it gets, though I find it looks much more silly with the belt-fed cylinder upgrade. We can also start to utilize the U-Invent machines we find now. The one important thing we can make here is anti-personnel rounds. These become our go-to ammo for any splicer, so we can save up on our other ammo types for big daddies. Speaking of which, it's time to fight another one, and this magazine size increase is super helpful. The less time we have to spend reloading during a big daddy fight, the better. That was all of the little sisters in the area, so I was ready to collect the rose sample for Dr. Langford. I already cleared the area out earlier before I had the objective, so it was easy as grabbing the rose and making it back to the doctor. Sadly, she does not make it out alive, as Ryan gasses her in her office, but she gives us the code to enter before she dies. To stop the trees in Arcadia from dying, I would have to make the Lazarus Vector and insert it into this machine. To do that, I would have to go to the farmer's market nearby and collect all of the supplies to make it. The farmer's market is a rather short level, which is nice. Big daddies are all but unproblematic for now with our newly upgraded pistol, and the only challenge facing us here is actually finding the ingredients we need for the vector. Chlorophyll solution is almost always found on Houdini splicers in Arcadia and the farmer's market, so I already had all I needed. But distilled water and B enzymes were the real problem. Distilled water could be found all around the market, but it was most prominent in the lower area and the wine shop where the owner was using it to dilute his wine. What a fucking cheapskate. There were plenty of splicers to keep me occupied while I was collecting it, but the anti-personnel rounds are super amazing. I don't think I would have been able to do this run without them. The last thing I needed now was B enzymes, and oh boy, these suck to get. First off, the room was covered in bees that would damage me if I went in without smoking them out. And even then, there's a timer on the smoker so you can only collect so many enzyme samples before you have to reactivate it. Secondly, every time I activated the smoker, a group of splicers would spawn in making me waste both time and ammo, which made it even more of a challenge. Needless to say, I ended up using a lot of my ammo and medkits, but I got enough enzymes to make the vector. See you later, farmer's market. Not. Nah, we aren't coming back ever again. The sting of the bee haunts me to this day. With the vector made, it was back to Arcadia to insert it in the machine, and who else but Andrew Ryan decided to send wave after wave of splicer to stop us. Since we have to wait for the vector to activate, I have to deal with all of them. The nice part here is that there is a machine that sells pistol ammo, and most of the splicers were dropping money or more ammo. So it wasn't the worst thing in the world. It just wasn't very fun. With that done, the trees were saved, and the way to Fort Frolic was open. I made sure I wasn't leaving anything super important behind and boarded the bathysphere. Oh, Fort Frolic, how I only like you a little bit. As Bioshock likes to do, it puts the entrance to the next area right in front of you, only to take it away when you get close. Sander Cohens is the head honcho around these parts, and he wants my help. I have no choice in this matter. To ease my pain, I made sure to play the slot machine until I hit the jackpot. I got an achievement and was almost loaded up to the brim with money. If we ever came close to running out when we were in Fort Frolic, we can always just play the machine since you almost always win more money than you put in. Now, Sandra Cohen is a sadistic son of a bitch, as seen here by the man he has strapped to a piano that I would say is mostly composed of dynamite. He's my type of guy. Once he blows up the poor bastard, he asked me to take a picture of him so we can finish his masterpiece together, and I obliged. Of course, he still sends some Houdini splicers after me, but what is art without a little pain and suffering? We make our way to the main hall and put the picture in the frame. 
Cohen awards us with a crossbow, which is useless to me, but appreciated nonetheless. He tasks us with taking three more pictures of people's corpses. The only problem is that they're all still alive, and have yet to actually be made into corpses. I needed to fix that. The first one on my list is one I like to refer to as the Mr. Freeze of Bioshock, as he makes sculptures out of his frozen victims, including me. His other victims are also still alive and come back to life when I get close. Since these splicers are already frozen, and not by my hand, I had no problem shooting them for an insta-kill shatter. Mr. Finnegan, on the other hand, had to get shot more than once, and I was able to photograph his body. While I'm on my way out to find my next victim, I run into a big daddy. I was overconfident here, and ran out of medkits. Of all things, I ran out of medkits. I had to make a hasty retreat, but the largest of fathers followed me. No problem, I just hacked a machine while he stood there and waited for me. I bought as many medkits as I could, and finished the fight with the behemoth boy. One little sister down, two to go. The next one was sooner than I expected, and I was, of course, not prepared for it. I ran out of ammo. All of my ammo, including my anti-personnel rounds, which I shot into him. He was so close to death, but I didn't have enough money to buy ammo. I thought this was it, but as luck had it, I hadn't looted the register yet, and was able to get just enough money for one single thing of ammo. The fight was over, and the little sister was saved, but I was worse off for it. I used the money I got from the fight to buy some more ammo, and had to avoid the next big daddy for the time being. To make it easier, I just hit up the slot machine until I won big. No need to do extra unnecessary work. More than I already am, at least. Speaking of unnecessary work, I used my newfound wealth to buy ammo to take down the last big daddy of the level. This one was pretty easy since I was fully stocked, and I no longer had to worry about them for the rest of the level. With that out of my way, I made it back to Cohen's masterpiece and added Finnegan's picture. He awarded me with some supplies and was on to the next photo. Silas Cobb was in Rapture Records, and the area around it was cleared out from my big daddy fights, so getting in was easy. Leaving was the hard part, as Cobb here decides to explode a bunch of crap and send some splicers after me. I make short work of them and have to crawl through fire to get back out, in which I practically kill Cobb in one shot to the head with an anti-personnel round. Two down, one to go. I make it back to the masterpiece and Cohen freaks out and starts sending a lot of spider splicers after me. Like, a lot. Not difficult to kill, but I definitely was close to running out of ammo by the end of the fight. Seriously, that is the biggest problem in this challenge. The last splicer I needed to kill liked to hang around the strip club and the booze shop. Sounds like my kind of guy. Didn't want to come out and face me until I found a bottle of fine gin. At least I think that's what set him off. He took quite a few shots to kill, but this big daddy helped me out for some reason, and after I quickly took the photograph, I was not turning around to find out. This was it. Cohen's masterpiece was now complete, and he came down to congratulate me himself, where I had the opportunity to kill him. I opted not to since I could always come back later for some extra goodies from his room. I'll say it now, I did not ever actually do that, but it's the thought that counts. Funnily enough, one of the splicers I didn't kill came around and set off Cohen, and he tried to kill me. I ran away fast, and got into the bathosphere down to Hephaestus. Hephaestus is where the challenge takes a nice little turn. The splicers here are quite difficult to kill, even with headshots and fully maxed out research. The leadhead splicers have also taken to using machine guns instead of pistols, so we lose the best source of free ammo starting here. We can't even make high quantities of anti-personnel rounds at the U-Invent because the parts we need are rare as hell. I'm looking at you, shell casings. Aside from these incredible downgrades we have to face, Hephaestus is very straightforward. We attempt to go into Andrew Ryan's office to kill him, and oops, the door is locked. Who could have seen that coming? While this game is known for subverting expectations, this is the one place it fails. So far, every level has been like that, and I know you have to make a game, but maybe don't always put the exit to the level at the entrance of the level. Thankfully, big daddies aren't the worst things ever anymore. I just have to make sure I have enough ammo and medkits to deal with them, and that's it. I probably should have remembered that I need to collect parts from the big daddies later in the level, but it slipped my mind, and before I knew it, I killed them all. Now, it is true that there are already corpses of big daddies around for this part. It would have been made significantly easier if I waited, so I didn't have to explore every nook and cranny to find them. To get into Ryan's office, we would need to finish an EMP device that someone was already working on, and everything I had to get for it was easy. Except for the big daddy parts. While it's true that big daddies spawn in after all the little sisters in the level are dealt with, I didn't want to waste my ammo on them for no reason. Of course, while I was looking, I was able to collect all the other parts I needed too. With the bomb complete, I somehow pocket it and make my way to the core to plant it. I had to overheat the core first by emptying this magma into the chamber, 
and thankfully I had some turrets hacked to help keep the splices off of me. From there I just had to run to the core and actually plant the bomb. Andrew Ryan was not very happy with me and sent some security to deal with it. Not a problem for me, as I just ran away like a wuss and activated the switch to Andrew Ryan's office so I can watch one of the best cutscenes in all of gaming. A man chooses, a slave obeys. Apparently I'm the latter, as Atlas has been controlling me every step of the way using the phrase, would you kindly. I get a birdie on the par 4 known as Andrew Ryan's face and shut down the self-destruct sequence for Atlas, who has now revealed himself to be Frank Fontaine, who was trying to wrest control of Rapture from Andrew Ryan this whole time, and because of me, he succeeded. Thankfully, the little sisters we've rescued along the way guide us to their home, and Ten Unbomb is there waiting for us once we wake up. She has helped alleviate some of Fontaine's control on our mind, but not all of it, as seen here when he uses some sort of code on me that slowly over time decreases my max health. And to fix this, we need to get Lot 192, some sort of concoction that will stop him from completely controlling our mind. I will not lie, this was without a doubt the hardest level in the game for me. With my max health decreasing and the lack of easy to find pistol ammo and money, I was not doing super hot. I was still making it my prime goal to deal with all of the little sisters, and was able to get armored shell too, which stacks with armored shell I believe, for maximum defense, for now at least. I needed to search Dr. Su Chong's suite for lot 192 and killed another big daddy on the way, leaving me in pretty bad shape but at least the two in this level were dealt with. Even though every encounter was much more difficult than I would have liked it to be, I still made the time to loot as many places as I could and even found the clever inventor gene tonic, which was super helpful. One fewer of each component for crafting? Yes, please. Inside of Su Chong's room, surprise, surprise, the compound isn't there. Su Chong moved it somewhere else. Somewhere else being a different apartment, of course. It wasn't too hard to track down, but when I took it, it had some rather unpleasant side effects. I couldn't choose which plasmids I currently had equipped, which was a problem if I wanted to hack any machines. I needed one more dose of Lot 192, and that happened to be in Apollo Square, a different area entirely. This also means I have to deal with more big daddies, and I was just struggling at this point. The pistol is not meant to be used this late in the game, and it definitely shows it. A lot of other splicers take backstage to the new leadhead splicer, and that was not good for me. So many headshots, even from anti-personnel rounds, and they could shred my HP with their machine guns. Eventually, I decided to just book it to the sample of Lot 192, which might have been a bad idea. I picked it up, and I'm sure I had control of my plasmids again, but that wasn't useful for the enemies I was facing, and to boot, I still had to kill one more big daddy in this area, and it was by far the worst one yet. I had no money. Not enough ammo, and there were still plenty of enemies I hadn't killed yet. I tried to deal with the Big Daddy a few times, but would have to find another solution to deal with him. That solution involved turrets, security, and a splicer helping me out. I had no ammo or medkits, so as soon as the Big Daddy hit the floor, I immediately rescued the little sister. I figured the splicer would kill me afterwards, but the turret and security kept him occupied while I was able to collect one of the last gifts from the little sister, which had the prolific inventor tonic. This tonic is super busted. I can now make items for one less of each component, and I would get double the item. Now I would be able to stay stocked up on anti-personnel rounds for the rest of the game. Now that I was my own man, it was time to get to Point Prometheus. For a turn of events, I didn't expect the first time I played this game. I get to become a big daddy myself. What a fun way to end a game, honestly. The only problem is that I have to go through a whole zone filled with splicers and big daddies collecting the suit pieces I need along with literally changing my voice box and dousing myself in pheromones so the little sisters would actually believe I'm a big daddy. With the ability to craft large quantities of ammo at our fingertips, this level was so much easier than the last. It also helps that two of the things we needed are very easy to get, and the big daddy suit actually increases our damage resistance by 25%. Also, sorry about the helmet, I don't actually know if you can disable it like you can in Bioshock 2, so it's stuck looking like this for the rest of the game. While the suit and helmet are easy to get, the boots and the pheromones are in other parts of the level, which meant I still had plenty of fighting to do, including the big daddies in the level, which cowered in fear at the set of me also being a big daddy. Just kidding, of course, they still tried super hard to kill me, but I am the better daddy in this scenario. I decided to try to collect the pheromones first, which led me to another big daddy that needed a whooping. There was now only one little sister left to rescue in the game, and I was super excited to finally stop killing my big brethren. My bro brethren, if you will. 
The pheromones were scattered all over the little sister brainwashing area, as I like to call it. Not hard to collect, but there were plenty of splicers for me to deal with. Now the only things left were the boots and the voice box modification. Now here's where I made a big mistake, and for that, I am super duper sorry. I stopped recording for 20-ish minutes but kept playing because I forgot that I stopped recording, so I don't actually have the video of me killing the last big daddy in the area, or of me collecting the boots and the voice box modification. I hope everyone has enough trust in me to believe that I actually did this with just the pistol, but it's also understandable if you don't. When I realized my mistake, I was already in the last area of the game that wasn't a boss fight. The whole reason I was becoming a big daddy was so the little sisters would help me through some doors only they could open. The problem, even though I had freed them from their torment, they were still brainwashed to collect Adam from dead corpses, so I had to sit and wait for them to collect, but it couldn't be that easy, could it? Splicers are attracted to the collection of Adam, I guess, and start pouring out of the goddamn walls. I had enough ammo for the first pit stop that we had to make, but I have to do this two more times, and there are no vending machines on the way, just the one at the beginning of the stage. Like the idiot I am, I decided not to just walk backwards a few rooms and moved forwards anyways, hoping a vending machine would be ahead. It wasn't, and instead I had to use the turrets and security to defeat the whole next wave of splicers. Definitely not recommended. The little sister I was with actually ended up dying after the second battle, which was sad, but the game just gives you a new one to protect. Speaking of which, I once again decided to not go back for ammo and utilize the turrets and security again. I know, not very pistol-like of me, but I never made a rule against it. Sadly, this is where I actually had to be smart for once. After the third collection, we get attacked by a big daddy, and they don't set off security. So I had to run all the way back to the beginning for some ammo, and left the little sister behind. She funnily enough didn't get hurt at all, and once I had the ammo, the big daddy went down with ease. This was it, the final part of the game. The little sister crawled into her vent and offered me her extraction tool to use on Fontaine during the fight. I had so much money from all the splicers I just got done killing that I was able to stock up completely for this fight, but I knew in my heart that it wouldn't be enough. I entered the elevator to Fontaine and immediately start the battle by leeching some of his atom from him. He was not happy and attacked. I used up all of my anti-personnel rounds on him first, and that did a bit more than half of his health. Then I had to literally use the rest of my ammo on him. Surprise, surprise, that still didn't bring him down low enough to have him run back to his chair so I could steal more atom. I was very worried now, and ran around to look for ammo, assuming the game wouldn't let you sit and spin if you ran out, and I was right. The many little sister vents in the room sometimes spawn some ammo for you, and it seemed like they knew what I was up to as it spawned me in some anti-personnel rounds. Now I was much more confident that I could beat Fontaine. If I could keep this up, it would be over in no time. Fontaine had some tricks up his sleeve, but the security he spawned in was easy to hack since I had researched them completely. Another round of collecting ammo from the vents, and he was back in the chair. I just had to drain his health bar one more time, and I was home free. The explosive barrels around really helped too, because they could set him on fire for me. Back into the chair for the last time, and one last syringe, and I was done. The little sisters finished him off for me, and I beat Bioshock using only the pistol. Mostly. This was honestly a super fun run for me, as I had been meaning to replay Bioshock for a while now. And this is one of those games that's hard not to enjoy even when it starts to get challenging. The pistol is of course not a very good weapon, but it is just good enough to get you through the game. I'd love to do another Bioshock video soon, I was thinking one where I can only use plasmids. Let me know if you'd like to see it, and if you've made it this far, please subscribe, it helps me out, and I'll definitely be putting up more challenge videos soon. Until next time friends, stay safe out there, and peace out.